Well, hello everyone, I'm Zwigo and today I'm bringing you the Can you beat Pokemon Ash Grey as Ash himself? As you guys know, Ash doesn't win in the anime. He loses to a kid named Richie. But let's see if we can replicate his entire journey and make sure we gain our title as champion. Ash Grey is basically a ROM hack of Fire Red explaining and running you through the entire anime adventure. So I'm going to have to leave some things out, but if you want to experience the game yourself, I highly recommend checking it out. Now for our team, Ash has a lot of Pokemon to choose from, but I decided to go with the worst team in my opinion. First off, of course, Pikachu, the mascot, the face of Pokemon, and Ash's loyal companion. Second will be Butterfree. I know he leaves him behind in the anime, but for us, he's here to stay. Third will be Pidgeot, and I know he gets left behind too, but he's gonna be here for the entire journey as well. Fourth is Squirtle, the coolest dude of the squad, and the other two members will be Muck and Tauros, I, but I won't use them as often as the rest of the team. I know I'm missing out on Snorlax, Charizard, and Primeape, but I feel like these guys are too good. So. With that out of the way, I just want to say a few last things. I will be using one held item in this playthrough and that will be the Lucky Egg since you find it pretty early on and it will help me grinding up my team a little bit faster. Also, if you guys need any banners, thumbnails or artwork, I highly recommend you checking out Elite Shadow. He helped me with my new banner and is also helping me with some side projects. His link will be in the description below, as well as the rules of this video. And now. Let's get right into our adventure. We start off our journey by naming ourselves Swiggo and we actually play as the Ash character. Our arrival in this game will be Gary, but we're going to be naming him Boy, because why not? The game starts off with Ash standing in his room. We go ahead and go to the Pokeball, pick up our pajamas, get dressed, get into bed, and the next morning we dream about choosing between Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. We realize that we were late and we woke up late, so we arrive at the lab and Professor Oak tells us that the three Pokemon have already been taken. But he has one last Pokemon left which is Pikachu, so we take that and we name it Sucka. If anybody in the comments down below can ch tell me the reference of the names I'm using, you know, that would be amazing. As we try to leave town, we get attacked by a Spearow and then we have to steal Misty's bike. As we try to leave with the bike, the Spearow form a roadblock to block us, but Pikachu jumps out, kills all of them and then a Ho-Ho flies by, just like in the anime. After this, we have our first encounter with Jesse and James and I have to say, there are way too much encounters with them in this game, like it's not even funny. I'm going to show you all of them, but like I'm not going to show the whole footage. I'll just talk over it. So our first battle was pretty good. We managed to defeat the Ekans and the Coughing with Thundershock. No problems at all. After saving the Poké Center, we go to Viridian Forest to capture ourselves our second team member, which is Caterpie. We name him Zuko and immediately after that we capture ourselves our third team member, Pijoto. We name him Boomy and then we have our second encounter with Team Rocket straight after that. Again, this really wasn't that much of a challenge, although our Pikachu and Caterpie fainted, Pijoto manages to finish them off. After this, we have to fight the Samurai from the anime with his pincer and metapod, but his pincer is a little bit too strong for our team, so we faint against him our first try. The battle after that, it's not that much of a problem anymore. We managed to paralyze the pincer, and Pijoto took him down with two gusts. And his second Pokemon is a metapod, and that thing goes down pretty easily as well. After a little bit more leveling in the grass, we managed to evolve our Caterpie into a metapod. I decided to go to Pewter City straight away and challenge Brock, but this was not my best idea ever. Since our Pokemon Pokemon are really bad against him, we just lost straight away. But one fun fact that I found out is that you can use electric type moves against ground type Pokemon in this realm hack. The attacks are not very effective, but still, they do damage, which is great. After losing against Brock, his dad comes and gets us and gives us a light ball by the house at the water, which is great because this will power up our electric type moves. I know that I wasn't going to be using any held items, but this is the only way that I will be able to defeat defeat Brock without over leveling, so I'm going to be using the light ball just to defeat Brock and then I will never use it again. After this I decided to grind up my team in the forest and managed to evolve my Metapod into a Butterfree because I thought that it would learn Confusion, but in this ROM hack he actually learns Gust, which is, I mean, I, I get it because Confusion is pretty OP and good against the first gym. After getting our Butterfree I decide to give Brock another shot, but it isn't of any use, he's Onyx, is just way too strong and way too bulky and he hits all of our Pokemon with a super effective rock throw, so we lost once again. 
I decide to grind my team up to level 14 and then we try again. His judo goes down very easily, no problems there. This battle is actually in two parts, so the second part is with the Onyx and with the Rain Up. I manage to Thunder Shock him three times with Pikachu before we go down and that brings him into red health. Butterfree can hit him in one tackle and then Butterfree gets taken out to switch into Boomy and finish it off with two gusts to earn ourselves the first gym badge. Mount Moon has totally been revamped as well, which is pretty cool, but in Mount Moon we have to actually fight Jesse and Jim. James, but they aren't a problem at all since Zuko takes them out pretty easily with some gusts. We arrive in Cerulean City and we go straight to the gym, but I got stuck in the pool and I couldn't get out sadly enough so I had to reset. We then have the whole cutscene with Misty arguing with their sisters and Misty is going to actually take this challenge, but Pikachu doesn't want to fight with us so we have to clear Misty with Zuko and Boomy alone. Staryu is no problem if you gusts and she's out of here. I then decide to poison Starmie and hit it with a few gusts before Zuko goes down. Boomy comes out and a quick attack and the poison damage takes Starmie down. After we acquired the 6th gym badge, Team Rocket comes and steals all of the water Pokemon in the gym so we have to stop them. But as always, they really aren't that much of a problem, even though they took down Butterfree, Pidgeotto manages to finish them off. We follow the route that leads to Vermilion City and on that route we find ourselves a Charmander. We take it with us but we're not going to use it because Charizard is way too overpowered. Apparently it has been left behind by a trainer named Damien and while we enter the Pokemon Center, he wants his Charmander back and he fights us for it. His team is basically a pushover with a matchup and a Ryor mix in there, but it is no problem, we take that thing down easily. We try to continue our journey, but the Squirtle Squad stops us by putting us into a hole and stealing our Pikachu. After doing some searching around, we manage to find them in the cave and we take the Squirtle with us. We name him Jet and then we go to Bill's lighthouse, help him from getting out of his Kabuto costume and head on with our journey. We arrive in Vermilion City just to get shut down by Lieutenant Search straight away. His Raichu is way too strong for our team, but after grinding them up to level 25, we managed to do it. I decide to thunder wave him so that my other Pokemon can outspeed them and then I hit him with a slam and a quick attack. Pikachu gets taken out so I send him Boomy to hit him with a quick attack, but Thunderbolt takes me out as well. Jet manages to hit a bite but Thunderbolt is just too strong and he goes down too, so Zuko has to finish it off with one last tackle. We board the SSN and in this game she actually sails away and then we go ahead and trade our Butterfree in for Eradicate because that's what Ash did in the anime as well. We find out that Team Rocket is at the bottom of the ship trying to make it sink. So we have to fight Jesse and James once again. We beat them really easily and we go ahead and trade our Butterfree back because we need that. We then head to the captain's room to get ourselves the hatchet so that we can cut down trees and this ship actually sinks so we have to get out through a crack in the wall and we see that Team Rocket is getting blasted off by a Gyarados. The Gyarados then attacks Texas, we defeat it, so we call some more Gyaradoses, Gyarades, Gyarades, nice, ah, got him, and we then wake up on an island. We decide to investigate and we find out that they're actually building a hotel on the water and the tentacle aren't too happy, so a big tentacle attacks the construction site and we have to fight it. We actually lost a few times but eventually we managed to scrape the win because he had moves like Hydro Cannon, Hydro Pump and Sludge Bomb which was good good against our team. We traverse our way through the rest of the island and we find ourselves encountering a little girl laughing at us. Later we find out that this is Sabrina who is the gym leader in Saffron Gym. She has been taken over by an evil spirit or, or something, I don't really know the story that well, but we have to defeat her. We manage to win the battle but she sends us outside into a toy box of some sort. We traverse the entire city and we find a man who teleports us out and warns us that we have to get ourselves a ghost Pokemon to defeat her. So we go to the Pokemon Tower, do some weird stuff with the Hounder, actually die there and he goes with us to take on Sabrina. So we go back to the gym and fight her again but she tells us that she's going to put us back in the toy box if we don't bring a ghost Pokemon but Hunter doesn't want to come out so she battles us, we defeat her but then Hunter comes 
comes out and we win ourselves the Marsh Patch without getting turned into a toy. We then arrive in Celadon City and we find out that Team Rocket are up to no good once again. They are apparently selling Pokemon in the game corner and, and that is illegal so we go ahead and follow Brock there and take on Jesse and James. As you may expect they form no real threat so we take them down and defuse it pretty easily. Brock and his almost girlfriend leave and we head on to the next city but on the road there there is a Hitmonchan who attacks us. We try to capture it but it appears to be from a trainer. We defeat it, the trainer comes and takes the Pokemon away from us. And now we can finally head to the 5th gym leader which is Jasmine. I know normally she's the 4th but here she's the 5th. But her Tangela does a lot of damage to our team so once we get past them we still have to go for Weeping Bell who then takes us out with a Razor Leaf. After that we lose a few more times against her Gloom but eventually we have a good run. So I grind up my team a little bit and went in again. Boomy now knows Wing Attack which should help us out a lot. Tangela goes down after spamming wing attack four times then Weeping Bell comes out and we do get off two more wing attacks before we get taken out by an acid. I switch in Zuko and finish off the Weeping Bell with a confusion. Gloom is up last so I go for a confusion and a sleep powder and two more confusions to take out the Gloom without we taking any damage. As we're about to get our gem badge Team Rocket arrive and they put fire to the gem so now we have to save the Gloom because everyone else got out fine. The Gloom is in the back of the gym so we go ahead and save it and we get our gym badge from Erica for saving her gloom. After that we find out that a nearby power plant is getting harassed by a muck so we go ahead and catch it and name it Top. After this we actually have to do a funny race which I find very cool that they implemented this. We have to race with our Ponyta against the Dodrio and we manage to win. After this win we go to the Safari Zone in Fuchsia City and capture ourselves a Tauros and we name it Iroh. Then we also go and save the Kangaskhan kid then bring him back to his parents and we save the Safari Zone from Team Rocket and the Jatini make sure that the bomb shoots them off into space. We then go and challenge Koga but he is a little bit more easy than in the other games. He only has two Pokemon Venomoth and Golbat and we take him down with our Zuko after he takes out half of my team then his Golbat takes down our Muk and our Tauros and Zuko finishes it off because we could put him to sleep and Confusion just does all all the rest. Here I had my opportunity to catch a Snorlax but I decided to run away and let the river flow. We then find ourselves in a circus and I don't really remember this episode of the anime so if anybody could explain this to me in the comments that would be nice. We had to bring the guy an executor so we did that and then he wants to fight us, we beat him up and we get on with our life. We then find Jessie standing on top of a rock thinking that she's all this and that and she took a licky tongue and a victory bell from James and now she wants to fight us. But we are just way too good, no problems here at all in this fight, we take her down very easily. Before we can actually enter the Pokemon League, we have to do an exam. So we fill out the exam, get 83% on it, which is more than enough, and then we have to do some battles with some rental Pokemon. So we finish the exam, we finish the battle with the rental Pokemon, then at the end of the island there is a daycare, so we go ahead and put a Pokemon in there, but apparently this is Team Rocket stealing all of the Pokemon that are put in the daycare, never to be seen again again. We find their secret hideout in the basement and we have to fight them. As usual this is no problem but then after we defeat them we also have to fight their two nemesis Cassidy and Butcher are also working on this project but they are way weaker than Jesse and James so we take them out as well and we save all the Pokemon out of the daycare. After that we take the boat to Cinnabar Island and there Team Rocket is attacking the research lab so we have to stop them once again. When are they going to stop attacking us and realize that we aren't going to let them take over the world and this game and they're just really annoying I'm sorry I had to deal with them so many times so many unnecessary battles but we take him down every single time. We then go to the local inn where a guy with a blonde wig is telling us that we should go ahead and challenge the gym leader so we go ahead and do that right
right away inside the volcano. So we go ahead and battle Blaine inside of the volcano. His first Pokemon is a Ninetales and we managed to bring it down into orange health with our Butterfree. Also this is a 3 on 3 fight so we can only use 3 Pokemon in this battle. I send in Squirtle and finish it off with a few Bubble Beams after we get hit with a few Flamethrowers and we hit ourselves in our Confusion as well. Right on then comes out but one Bubble Beam takes him down too. As last the Magmar comes out and he takes me down with a Fire Blast so we lost. But as I try to go back to the Volcano, Team Rocket is there waiting for us. And this is actually the first and only time that we lose against them because our Pokemon are pretty underleveled and with our Pokemon I mean Squirtle actually. He could, he wasn't up to the challenge and as we came to their Lickitung, Pikachu wasn't strong enough to take it out so we lost. But next time we went back again and this time we defeated them without any problems. After that, Blaine decides to give us one more chance to redeem ourselves and earn the Volcano Badge at the top of the Volcano this time. So we go back and this is a one-on-one -on -one battle, Squirtle versus Magmar, but we still lost sadly enough. But as I tried to go back, I found out that he gives you the Gym Badge even though you lose. So we didn't win, but we got the Gym Badge, which is nice. Also the item that my Squirtle is holding is Black Glasses, we can't take those off, it, it has to have the sunglasses is on all the time guys. After that we go ahead and talk to a guy next to the volcano, he gives us our raft and as we get the raft there's also a war turtle who brings us to his Blastoise and war turtle family who have all fallen asleep because of a Jigglypuff that was in the Blastoise's cannon. So the Blastoise gets mad at us, we have to defeat it and I decide to go Squirtle against Blastoise and we manage to defeat it. After the shenanigans we actually arrive back in Viridian City and we fight the last gym leader. But as we enter the gym, Gary has lost against Team Rocket because apparently Jesse and James are the final gym leaders in this game. As we start to fight them, we see that they have different Pokemon than normal. They now have a Machamp, Kingler and a Rhydon, which are crazy good Pokemon. So I wasn't really prepared to take this gym down from first try. So we lost against the Kingler because it had 1 HP remaining and we couldn't do enough damage with Tauros. But on our second try, I knew what to do. I start off with Zuko and put the Machamp to sleep with Sleep Powder and I start spamming Psybeam. He wakes up, it's me with a super effective Rock Tomb, but we take him down. Next up is Rhydon, so I switch into Jet to finish it off with one single Bubble Beam. Last up is Kingler, so one Thunderbolt takes that thing down. But it doesn't end here, they are also taking us on with their other team. Their first victory bell goes down with two Psybeams. Next up is Weezing, who can do great damage against our Butterfree, but three Psybeams take it down as well. Well, next up is Arbok who takes out our Butterfree so we switch in Pikachu to take it down with the Thunderbolt. Last is Lickitung and I hit it with two Thunderbolts before we get taken out with a Slam. I switch in Boomy to finish it off with two Wing Attacks. We get the Earth Badge and surf south of Palatown. We arrive in a little house with a guy with a Pikachu. He surfs on top of a rock with a big wave and puts his flag on it. He then wants to battle us with his Pikachu against mine and mine manages to win. As we proceed further throughout the region, Region, there is a Dragonite who comes to us with a holographic message. We are apparently invited to a tournament to compete for a very big prize with the best trainers around the world. So we follow the instructions on the holographic reader and we find ourselves in New Island. I start to walk around the building on the New Island and then I see three Pokemon trainers and we have to fight them. The first one seems to specialize in blue Pokemon somehow because there's a Nidoqueen thrown in there. Although otherwise I would have said water Pokemon, but Pikachu manages to do the job and take most of them out. After he goes down, Squirtle does the rest of the job. I think that this is really cool that they took the first movie and implemented that into this game. Very nice. The second trainer seems to have somewhat of a random team, I don't really know because I haven't seen the movie. There's a Rapidash, a Dugon, a Blastoise, a Wigglytuff, a Vileplume in there, so it is a pretty decent team, but our team is just way too strong with Pikachu and Squirtle in there so we win the second battle too. The third battle was pretty easy, we didn't lose any Pokemon in this battle even though that he had a Rhyhorn and a Pidgeot and a Hypnolee and a Scyther, all of those in one team which is crazy. 
after winning the three battles, we finally see the mastermind behind this. It's Mewtwo. Mewtwo. And he tells us that we aren't treating Pokemon right and that we are using them as slaves and that he's going to stop this nonsense. He's going to end the world and become the ruler and make sure that Pokemon can live freely. But we can't let that happen, so we go ahead and fight him. But he has the three clones from the movie, so Venusaur, Blastoise and Charizard level 75, all of them. So we lost, but you are supposed to lose this battle because then this cutscene triggers. All of our Pokemon get captured and as we head back to the building we see that there are clones of every single Pokemon in there and that they are fighting each other, just like the scene in the movie. We then confront Mewtwo one last time but Mew steps in and fights Mewtwo. They shoot a beam at each other but I go in between and I get turned into stone just like in the movie. Pikachu's tears turn me back into a human and Mewtwo erases everyone's mind and sees that it isn't as bad as he thought. We get sent back to the mainland and we can move on to the Pokemon League. But we have to do a little side story first though. We have to help Bruno to catch one Onyx and we do that pretty easily. We defeat the Onyx, he captures it. Pretty cool animation though, not gonna lie. And then we head on to the Pokemon League but as you might think there actually is in an Elite Four. You have to compete in a tournament against normal trainers in this game, but they have crazy high level Pokemon. The first one is rather easy. He starts off with an Executor and I start off with Zuko to take it down with one Silver Wind. Golbat is next and we take that thing down with two Thunderbolts and last up is Seedra. Seedra goes down in one of them. The next trainer starts off with an Electrode that is already level 50, so I switch out Jet and switch in Sokka to paralyze it. Hits me with a rollout, I hit him with a double edge. He then gets paralyzed and one more double edge takes him down but the recoil damage also takes me down. Next up is Cubone so I switch in Jet but we actually can't attack this Cubone so he takes us down because he also always kept spamming protect and our hydro pump missed every single time. So I switch in our last hope Suko. I start by spamming Psybeam and Psybeam and Psybeam but he keeps using protect and our Psybeam barely does any damage. So I switch to Silverwind, hit him with two of those, he lives with a slitter of health so one Psybeam Psybeam takes it out. And here I'm very lucky that his final Pokemon is a Nidorino. So I start by Psybeaming it, Psybeaming it, and Psybeaming it once again, and eventually he goes down, and we have our second battle in the bag. The third contestant starts off with a Graveler on the ice field. No problems here, one Bubble Beam, and he goes down. Second Pokemon is an Arcanine, so he sets up a sunny day. I counter him by setting up my Rain Dance and hit him with a Hydro Pump. We get hit with a big crunch, and then next turn we get hit with another crunch as we miss our Hydro Pump. We live on 7 health, he then sets up another Sunny Day, we get a high roll with our Hydro Pump which takes out the Arcanine. The last Pokemon is a Cloyster so I go ahead and Thunderbolt it. Easy win. The final battle takes place on the Flower Field and our opponent is an Aroma Lady. She starts off with a Beedrill and I start off with Jet. I start off by going for a Hydro Pump and then we get hit with a Twin Needle. I then set up a Rain Dance and we miss our next Hydro Pump because we got attracted. Then we hit it with another Hydro Pump we get hit with another twin needle, we get off one last attack before we go down. So Sokka finishes it off with a Thunderbolt. Next up is Scyther and this is really scary because he set up a Swords Dance and a Double Team, but two Thunderbolts managed to do the job. Last up is a Bellsprout. <laughs> What level 70? No problem. Zuko takes that thing down with three Psy Beams. Easy. As we leave this battle, Richie comes and talks to us and tells that he will be my next opponent. But sadly enough, guys, I couldn't get the event of triggering him to work. Normally, you're about to fight Team Rocket here. I do that. And then you have to leave the Indigo Plateau. And then Team Rocket will show up once again. You fight them once again. Then Richie comes and... Pidgeot flies you into the room, but that event didn't want to trigger, I tried walking through walls to get into the room, I tried everything, I tried resetting my game, I tried updating my ROM with the latest version, but that didn't work either some, for some weird reason, so I couldn't get this event to trigger. So what I'm going to do guys, there is still a backstory after you defeat the Pokemon League, there is still the Orange Islands and stuff like that, so I'm probably going to be splitting this video in two parts. The next part will be out somewhere in the near future where I play through the entire game once again and then do the second part of this ROM hack. But I highly encourage you to go ahead and try this game out. It's crazy good. It's amazing with all the cutscenes, all the little storylines. It's 
probably one of the best realm hacks out there, but I really enjoyed making this challenge even though that it isn't really completed. If you guys want me to play other realm hacks or other challenges, leave your ideas in the comments down below, that's always appreciated since comments are good for the YouTube algorithm, thank you my dry bread. And as always people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo and I'll see you guys next time.